Hello everyone, my name is Pablo Reyes and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, this is the 3D Studio. I'm in my junior year of college here at the University of Texas at Dallas. And with these videos, I just want to give you a little taste of what you might experience if you come to UTD. I'm going to tell you more about how I decided to pick this major because this is not how it started. I actually came from a mechanical engineering program and then I went on declared and then I went emerging media and communications and now I'm here at design and production. But my career is only one out of many that you could experience if you come to this university. So today I'm gonna to bring you two more interviews from students that are a completely different major from mine. One is from my friend Natalie. She's studying mechanical engineering at the engineering and computer science building. And the other one is from my friend Robert. He's now studying chemistry at the Science Learning Center, but he actually came to UTD as a biomedical engineer. Please keep in mind that everyone has a unique experience in this university. And I just want to bring to you a student to student perspective so you know what it actually might be once you get into that field. Because you might have an idea of what a field might be, but you're not going to know until you're actually taking the classes and going to the labs and working on projects. Once again, welcome back, and I hope you like the interview. Okay, okay, start over. Well, I just remember always having a thing for building things when I was a kid. It wasn't anything, I was never a human calculator or anything like that, but um, doing the actual logistics process, the building and how things worked was something that always fascinated me. When I was a kid, I just, I was really little, but I fixed one of my dad's set-top boxes for him and he'd been trying to fix it for two weeks and I just looked at it and said, well, that part's missing. And so um, he's been telling me since day one that I should be an engineer, but um, you know, it's definitely intimidating, so. I could, it took me a while to decide, but we're here now, so. I find actually being one of the only females in you know, a world full of males really empowering, but I grew up with guys, I have a brother, so I think it's awesome, but that's just me. Well, I didn't choose chemistry to begin with. I chose biomedical engineering, and the only reason I chose biomedical was because of the name. Okay, I'm gonna do medicine, like medical school later on, and I heard biomedical, I was like, okay, so. I'm gonna do something that's medically related, but at the same time, I'm gonna do some type of engineering. Um, I think that a misconception that people th that people probably carry until they even graduate is that you have to be this math whiz to do engineering. It's it's more of a persistence thing. It's more of a conceptual thing. More than anything, you need to make sure that you understand and have a grasp for what you're actually doing because all the math problems you can look up later. I think a lot of people don't understand that engineering is more than math skills. It's you have to have a balance of social skills, of artistic, you know, a sense, and then the math comes later. You learn it. You know, you just keep practicing. So. Chemistry, a lot of people they are afraid of it because of organic. It's like one of the classes that a lot of people would say this is going to be the hardest thing like in my life. But you have to realize that's only one class and chemistry is not just organic. It's also physical chemistry or quantitative, instrumental. You know, it's weird. I don't even know if I would say like a specific person. I was literally just thinking about this today. I have a thing for construction workers because to me, it's like our brothers, you know, of engineers. It's like, these are the people that are actually building our country and I'm fascinated by it. And I know for a fact that if I wasn't doing this, it sounds weird to say I want to be Bob the Builder, but that's totally what I would want to do. Professionals, it was actually my organic chemistry professor that I had this last year. He saw that I was actually doing well in the course and he told me, you know what? Like, I want to see you, like, not only in the classroom, but also in the laboratory here at UTD. I feel grateful for him, and not just him, but also my freshman professor, general chemistry professor. And she told me that there was much more um, aside from the textbooks that they taught you, but you can experience that only from reading it, but you have to live it. Okay, um, I would probably say that three things I would tell my freshman self would be to know that I'm doing what I'm doing for the right reasons, to live consciously, and also to try to seek balance in, in all areas. Prioritizing. Me, personally, in high school, I always practiced a lot. I always did like a lot of practice problems related to chemistry. And that's one of the things that hasn't stopped yet, even here in college. Another thing is that as a chemistry major, I have to visualize things a lot, especially since most of the stuff that I read from books are certain molecules and I have to be able to visualize them in a 3D perspective. One of the things I noticed like when I was in the program, SHPP, it was a medical program, I realized that it's different courses, but that doesn't mean that they're 
all by themselves. If anything, they all link together. So me being a chemistry major, I had to prepare myself, not just for certain reactions, but also to be able to receive criticism from a biochemistry or computer science major. This is kind of, I think it's kind of a vague answer to your question, but it's also kind of just an uplifting fact. But with stuff like this, you start to get really discouraged and really bored because you start to think like, man, if this is all this is, you know, just math and all this stuff, like, what am I gonna do? And I think that's why a lot of people give up. Truthfully, you have to do the things that you enjoy about this field that are involved in your real life. You're always gonna have the egghead in class who like, you know, has a dad that's an astrophysicist and a mom that's some other kind of engineer. You know what I mean? That kid that just literally knows the ups and downs of everything. But you have to remember that engineering is about what you don't know yet as well. You know, it's about all these things that you're going to use a creative approach to find efficiency. You got to do things like learn how to work on your car. Things that, for me, it's mechanical engineering. So doing things that involve mechanics or building or innovation, things like that, whether it's a class project or in your real life, will help you remember why you're actually doing this. So for those certain students, the first thing that I will tell them is to actually seek for advice. And I know that's a lot coming from high school to college. You have to do things on your own, or maybe you're a top student, or maybe you weren't, but if you don't seek help, you're gonna drag yourself in the long run. And it's not gonna get easier from that. Like you really have to seek help, not just from faculty, but from a counselor, from a financial aid officer, not just them, but also hear out from students, because they're the ones that are getting that firsthand experience in the classroom and as well as in the labs. Once again, thank you Robert, thank you Natalie for sharing your experience with us. Thank you for taking the time and being open-minded about the questions. And if you liked the video, it will help me a lot if you leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down, just so that I know that I'm making the right content for you. I know one person in the last video gave me a thumbs down, but leave me a comment down in the description because I want to know what am I doing wrong. Now I know how much work it takes to make a video. And let me tell you, you have to write a script you have to record, you have to edit, you have to color code, you have to add the background music, the animations, and then you have to market the video. And it's just too much for one person, but I'm doing it, I'm getting it done. I want to help students that are struggling because I struggle and I wish I had somebody like this to help me out. And even if it's just one person, thank you for watching this. Once again, my name is Pablo Reyes and I'll see you in the next video.